Hey y'all, welcome back to Knit and Stitches. So today we're gonna kinda go and do a video on different types of looms, um, different types of peg distance measurements, how many pegs are in a loom, things like that. I kinda got a couple of ladies out there that was had seen a couple pictures on my social media of some of the hats and scarves and stuff I made and just kinda had some questions on what looms I use, uh, what stitches, things like that. So I kind of decided to do a video to kind of go over different looms um, that I have, that I use, the stitches, stuff like that. So if you're new to loom knitting, um, definitely follow us, watch the video, kind of learn some different ideas, um, things like that. We also do a bunch of videos on crocheting for beginners, kind of get started on crocheting and then get into different patterns different stitches on crocheting also so today I'm going to kind of go over some of the looms that I have with me um, I don't have all the looms I have and yes I do have a big variety of looms uh, for the simple fact I kind of wanted to get a different idea of what each loom can create what the stitches come out to look like um, whether they're real tight or they're real loose so some of the looms I have with me today, I'll kind of go over and show you. This set here is by Nifty Knitters. I don't believe Nifty Knitters is still in business um, anymore. I'm not positive, but I've kind of seen a couple of comments on my Facebook page and group and that, that kind of says that they had went out, I guess, quite a while ago. But these were given to me um, a couple months ago and I realized that these are from Nifty Knitters. Now different loom, there's several different loom kits out there that you can actually get different sizes of looms. Um, this one came with three. I have the green one which is a 36 peg and I believe it's probably a little about a half inch gauge I would guess. Um, one thing I didn't like about these is they didn't have or come with like anything stating what the width gauge was. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with looming, the knit gauge is the, the distance between the pegs. So you go from the top of this peg to the top of this peg. I'll tell you what the width measurements are um, on the gauge. So that's this one. Uh, this one here is usually for like a, a toddler hat. Um, I made scarves on it. So depending on like what stitch or how far your stitches you want to have, you could do a scarf. You can make just about anything on a round loom. Uh, th this one is a 40 peg loom. And I think it's a 5 8 gauge. If I had to take a look and just guess, that's what this one would be. And then that's the distance between the pegs here. Uh, this is more like a older child's hat, um, a small adult's um, head. So when you're when you're making a hat on the loom, you kind of you kind of want to make sure that the loom's going to fit um, around your head if you're making it for yourself. When I make it for others, I always ask the measurements usually of the around the top of their head to make sure that I come out with the right fit because you don't want to create a hat and it be too big or too small. This one is a 44 peg here. And I think this is a 5 8 inch gauge also. This is more for um, of an adult, a man, a man hat. Um, kind of a little bit bigger. Um, if you like the biggerness around the, the head for the scarf. I mean, for the hat, excuse me. Um, an, another one I did on this one is a scarf. Um, I did about, I would say a 12 inch wide, about a 10 to 12 inch wide scarf that I had made a while back with the pockets. That's what this one I used here. Um, another one is, this is a smaller one. This one was just kind of part of the bunch that was given to me. I'm not sure the, of the maker of this loom, but this is a 12 peg. Um, this one I use more like for handles for purses that I knit. Um, this is also a good for a sock for like a child sock. Works really well. Uh, Santa Claus hats when I did my snowman over the holidays I used this to make the little hat for the snowman. So that works really good and I believe this one is also a 5 8 
inch. Um, there's several different brands of looms out there. Um, if you decide to get into looming, it is a lot of fun. There's a lot of different um, options out there as far as looms. There's not only round looms, but there's also flat looms. Um, there's different, several different ones that you can get like at Joann's Fabrics or even on Amazon. Amazon has a nice set that I had bought, which I actually have at home. I don't have with me today. Um, but I do have a couple of sets that I had bought on Amazon when I first started because I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money when I first started to make sure that looming was something I really enjoyed. Um, another company I really like is they're on Etsy and they're Cottage Looms and they make handmade loom this is one of their looms here uh, this is all solid wood all the way around um, they got your little cast on peg here uh, this one here is a 24 large gauge this one is a 24 peg and the large is the 5 8 inch between the pegs now these are and can be custom made um, if you contact them and let them know the size of the loom or the width of the pegs that you are wanting or how many pegs. So that's this one. This one I usually use for baby hats. Um, if I want it, you know, a little bit bigger on the gauge, uh, this makes really good newborn and baby hats. Um, this one here, this is a smaller one that I had gotten. I haven't used this one, but I do have another one just like it that I use. Sorry that I left the tag still on here. And as you can see, it's cottage looms. Another thing is on the very back of the loom, it, they stamp it with their, their brand name, cottage looms on there. Uh, this one is a 36 peg loom. And I believe this is a 1 fourth inch gauge. I can kind of tell simply by the distance between here. This is more uh, for baby socks, children's socks. Um, you can also use these for like, if you make gnomes, like knitted gnomes, they're really cute to make, or Santa Claus hats, ornaments. Um, this one works really well. The stitches are really close and tight, and that's what I like to use that one for. Uh, another round one I have here from Cottage Looms, this one here is a 44, <clears throat> excuse me. This one here is a 44 peg, and I would say it's about a half an inch. No, a little under a half, maybe one eighth. I definitely wouldn't say that's a five eighth or a one fourth. Um, this one here is is good for, uh, as I stated, another baby hat if you want the stitches closer. So if you actually take a look at the difference between these two, they're actually the same size around, but the pegs, the pegs are bigger on this one and smaller here. And then your width gauge is actually different. This one here is a 5 8 and as I stated, this is really close to a 1 4 um, inch gauge. But that's the difference between the gauges and the number of pegs that you have. Um, a flat loom, as I stated, this is a flat loom here. This has 20 pegs across. It is um, used, I usually use this for like making a scarf if I want to do a scarf. Um, another thing I did is you can create kind of like a scarf pattern. You just wrap and keep whatever stitch you decide to use, the e-wrap, the purl, the flat stitch. Um, and I just make the like scarf long enough and I make several different colors and then I go and I attach them together to make a blanket. So it's it's really neat. This one's um, kind of fun to work with. Um, another one I have, I'll kind of show you. This was one that a lady had asked. She wanted to kind of see uh, what it looked like. Sorry about the yarn kind of wrapped around here. I'm actually in the process of making another hat on my loom. This is another cottage loom. This one here is 120 pegs. It's a one fourth inch. And this is the one that I actually use to make my really tight knitted hats, kind of like the one you see up here. Um, this was my first one I made. This will be my second. And I got a lot of compliments on my social media group, my Facebook group, um, as far as the hat, kind of asking what kind of looms I used um, on that hat and how I got my stitches so small and straight. Well, that's kind of the loom that I use. Um, as I stated, they are cottage looms. They are on Etsy. I believe right now their store is down. Um, they're working on catching up on orders. I had recently had placed another order uh, just a little bit ago and kind of was informed that they're in the process of putting their store back up, putting more items back on there because that is how good their looms are. They, they, they're selling the minute they put them on the site, um, they're sold. 
So that kind of gives you an idea of how good um, and high quality their looms are. Um, some of the other looms I have, I did order a couple, I think one, two, three. I have five different Cindy Wood looms that I had ordered. I have, don't have those with me, those are at home. Um, I travel a lot for work, so <clears throat> I don't have them with me right now. But Cindy Wood looms, I have gotten a lot of um, feedback that how good they are also they're handmade and they are, run their business out of their home building the looms as well um there's they're guaranteed uh from what i was told but i haven't used them yet i'm looking forward to it and when i do i'll do another video uh when i get home kind of show you guys those looms um the afghan loom um i noticed i had a few comments about some of you not liking the afghan loom it's too big it's too bulky um but it's kind of like a figure eight and they're kind of nice because if you don't want to like patchwork your blankets by doing um, patches on a, on a loom or even like the scarf, you know, if you did the scarf sections and section it together, if you just want to, you know, knit and go and make the blanket all in one, um, the Afghan looms work really well. They can take a little bit of practice to get used to, but once you get into looming and learn the different stitches and that, it's actually really easy. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can. I never thought I would ever pick up a crochet hook or a loom and start creating different things. So why loom knitting? Why do people like it and why do they choose to do loom knitting besides or over needle knitting? Uh, loom knitting creates a very even knit pattern. It's kind of similar to using the needles, but using a loom is different and incredibly easy to learn. You can make different things like hats, scarves, uh, crowls, blankets, and it doesn't always have to be on a flat loom. You can use round looms, you can use square looms. You just have to, if you're new, you wanna kind of practice, kind of get used to each loom that you're using and what the best stitch is to use on those looms. Um, there are several different wraps, pearl stitches, flat, uh, flat knit stitches, there's several different videos out there on YouTube that kind of guides you and shows you different stitches out there. Uh, loom knitting is not just, you're not just stuck with one certain stitch. There's several different stitches out there that you can do. A uh, few of my favorites I like are the flat knit. I like that one. That's kind of a tighter, more together type of stitch. Uh, the E-wrap stitch is probably one of the most easiest for a beginner to start with. It's just simply wrapping and flipping your your stitches over each other and we'll get into that also kind of show you different stitches um another thing that i like is or i recommend is if you start loom knitting and you have questions which i've come across also what type of loom do i get how many pegs should i start with what type of project should i start practicing with well, from my own personal perspective on that, I would say the easiest thing to start with is a hat. Um, you know, look for a pattern online or go on YouTube, find hat videos. There's a lot of different videos out there. Uh, one I like and recommend is just a basic hat, just a basic hat e-wrap. Um, and you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on a big kit of looms. Uh, if you go on Amazon, like I said, or if you go to even Michael's, Joanne Fabrics, they have different ones. Now, there is one set of looms um, some people like, I preferably don't like, and they're the Boyd looms. The only reason I don't like them is because on your loom, on the Boyd boy loom, at the top of your, your peg, they're kind of like a hook. And that was the first set I actually bought just to kind of try it out, but it kept snagging when I went to flip my my stitches. My yarn kept snagging under the hook um, and it got very frustrating for me. So I ended up giving those away and decided to go with um, the, the looms that have the flat on the top or like these ones, the cottage looms. You know, they have the, there's nothing here to catch on it. Um, another question I had is, are these pegs metal? On the cottage looms, yes, they are metal and they're very strong and they're very easy to work with. Um, I believe her name was Alexis, um, had asked, are they hard? She, uh, she bought one and was having a hard time trying to figure out how to keep her stitches from getting too tight. 
I had the same issue when I first started on the 120 peg because yes, those pegs are very close together and trying to practice to get the stitches just right to be able to keep going and flipping those stitches. It took me about four or five tries to kind of figure out what the best cast on was and how to get my stitches to where they weren't extremely tight and hard to flip. Once you get the hang of that, it is super easy. I, I, I can whip out a hat within three or four days. Now, before it seemed like I was never going to finish a hat because I couldn't get the, I couldn't quite get the rhythm of how loose or whatever to keep my stitches. Um, on the 120 peg, when I first started, I can't, you can't just keep wrapping those, those pegs and flipping. You have to go one by one until you feel comfortable with not only the wrapping of the peg, but also the giveness of the yarn to where you have enough of that stretch to get that yarn over that peg without breaking the yarn or without snagging, um, causing snag in your pattern. So again, guys, these are just kind of a few of the looms that I have to show you today. Again, if you decide to get into looming, just get a basic kit. Most of the kits come with three or four different hoops. You also get one um, loom, looming hook in it. Uh, there are also different types of loom hooks out there also that you can look at. And we'll do another video on that for you if, if you decide um, to kind of find out what, what hooks work better. But, so again, I thank you all for stopping by today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, if you want to follow us along on more in instructional videos, hit that subscribe button. We'd be glad to have you along. Uh, hit that notification bell. That notification bell will let you know when a new video comes out. And we'll check you all next time. Have a great day.